Hello there and Happy New Year. Hopefully you guys are doing well. We've got some new X-Wing spoilers to talk about from Atomic Mass Games. Just dropped to us last night. So I know that I'm a whole year off from covering this entire preview. But that's okay. We're going to talk about last year's news this year in today's video. Hopefully you guys are recovering and did well and had a safe and responsible New Year's Eve. Happy New Year to everybody. We are going to be talking about these. Also, if you guys didn't know, we are doing a lightsaber giveaway again. We did one around Christmas. We're doing another one that was going to run all the way through January and February. And so you got plenty of time to enter to win. You just have to be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. It's as simple as that. Also, big shout out to today's sponsor. Sponsor, luxury play style ring in the new year with some amazing full metal tokens they come in a variety of finishes they're nice and heavy and beautiful they're gonna love to be on your tabletop and you're gonna love to have them use code crabock vip you're gonna save 15 percent and also orders of 35 dollars or more are gonna get a free lightsaber nunchuck token while supplies last so let's talk about pre vizsla as our first new preview from atomic mass games recent little spoiler article um he is scum or separatist and um before we get into the meat and potatoes of the card i want to talk about this art piece i love the art in this wave this whole wave has had so many great art pieces and uh, it's one of the things i always like to talk about because i think the art that goes into these games is one of the things that makes the cards so memorable and makes the experience so much more thematic and on brand and uh and and, and the art is great like none of the art is lousy in these games even you gold squadron the original not not the podcast you know props to gold squadron podcast too but i'm talking about the original gold squadron y-wing with its with his goofy shoulder like you know what you're even awesome too and, and i accept you in all your glory but but this is an, uh, an exceptionally good piece here i love the the pose i i love the, the the mandalorian guards behind him by the way i totally want those mandos and pre i want everybody in this picture to show up in Star Wars Legion, and I need it, like, in 2022, maybe first half of 2022. Let's make that happen, I'm, I'm hoping. Uh, I'm hoping that AMG sees this and says, you know what, that looks really good. Hey, we've got art for this already, let's go ahead and get this done. Maybe. Those of you who play Star Wars Legion know what I'm talking about. You love to see crossovers, you love to see shared art get used from one game to the next game, too, and sometimes... That art can be a little bit of a spoiler, but it's definitely, it's happened more than enough times where the art was not an indication of the next wave. So, you know, let's just take it for face value. It's a great piece of art, and I would love to see it get used again in the future. Okay, so Pre Vizsla uh, is going to grant a scum or a separatist ship that happens to have a crew slot. He's going to grant them the coordinate action. It's a white coordinate action, and that's certainly a good thing. We've seen so many red coordinates, or even in Maul's case, a purple coordinate. But a white coordinate action is a great thing to have. Now, uh, for, for at least for the separatists, there's not um, not a whole lot of crew slots, at least not ones that are cheap. Um, we're gonna see we're looking at two different crew today, and so there's gonna be limited options on where you can when you can bring this guy. Um, it'll work fine if you're using it on a big ship, but maybe like maybe a cheap HMP gunship. You know, what 37 points right now, I think. So you know, you, you that could be. That could be a cheap option to get him out there. Uh, it'll be really interesting when, um, you know, future ships come out. Like, if the Separatists do ever get a Sheathapede, will it be the same cheap Sheathapede we've seen for the Rebels? Will they get maybe a more expensive, like, deluxe, you know, luxury Sheathapede? You know, Dooku's Choice, you know, or something like that. Because you know, these are some good crew we're going to get here. And it's like, are they going to be too cheap to get out there onto the battlefield? Or are you going to have to pay a little bit more for uh, a luxury Mandalorian Sheathapede to put Pre Vizsla on? So, uh, in addition to granting the coordinate, he's going to say, while you perform a coordinate action, you can choose a friendly crew remote instead of another friendly ship. Instead of performing an action, that remote relocates forward using a two straight or a one bank template, which is really, really cool. So, a lot of people might see this and say, wait, a remote? Or what's a crew remote? Don't forget, we've got Mandalorian remotes that are coming, right? They're crew that are going to go on your ship and they're going to jump out into space and so you've got like flying spacemen in or and women and women you got flying space mandos in x-wing right now very very cool um so yes yeah, so we're getting we're getting uh pre Vizsla to kind of coordinate them and move them around a little bit and so while i believe every faction minus the new uh or the new two factions for the sequel trilogy uh, all the original five factions are going to all get 
uh, their own mandos in space, only scum and separatists will have this version of Pre Vizsla able to kind of redirect and uh, kind of move them around. He's, he's, he, and it's not that the other ones don't have jetpacks. It's that he is giving them additional mobility while with the use of a white coordinate action. So he's like, hey, 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 you, you're going to go here and you're going to do it now. And your opponent's not going to expect that. And you're all of a sudden you're going to like put the mandos in the flight path and then they're going to shoot you, shoot you, shoot you. So uh, it's pretty cool. I like what he's doing there. And he's also got two, you know, basically two benefits to him. It's not just that he can move those mandos around. He's also giving you a white coordinate action. You know, if you were going to take a, maybe, a, you know, a, a cheap carrier, it just gives you an extra support ship. So you don't even have to, you don't have to run Mandos at all. He can, you know, he can perform two functions. Or once your Mandos use up their shots, you know, once they have kind of expired or been killed or something like that, uh, then you still have the coordinate that you can use for your bigger ships. So I think that that's pretty cool. You know, again, if you can get a target lock and a focus on like a big three attack ship that gets other bonuses and stuff too, then that just makes it way more powerful. And so you want your your big, powerful, expensive ship to be able to get those double modded shots when possible. And coordinate is one way to do that. Okay. Um, next up, we have Tal Merrick for Separatist only. So not available to scum. I know it seems like obscene that there's actually something not available to scum, but there you go. Uh, so Talmeric says, set up before placing forces, choose one enemy ship and assign it the false friend condition to it. And as an action, you say, if the false friend condition is not assigned to an enemy ship, assign it to an enemy ship in your forward arc at range zero to two. So first thing, you're going to be able to put a condition on somebody at the beginning of the game. And then as an action, you can put a, that condition on somebody else if for whatever reason somebody has lost this condition, whether they're destroyed or they can remove it. And how can they remove it, you ask? Well, let's take a look at the false friend condition. During the system phase, if an enemy ship with Tal Merrick upgrade is at range zero to two, or an enemy remote is at range zero to two, flip your dial face up. And it also gives you the action, gain a deplete token and a stress token to discard this condition. So. There's a whole lot to unpack with this particular condition. So basically, the way it works, when you give somebody this, Tal is going to put this on another ship, and then you, whether they get rid of it or they blow up, you, uh, Tal can still keep putting this on other ships. It's only going to be on one at a time, but but this is nasty, and, and, and this is going to beg the question, is this going to remain legal once it comes out? Because this was obviously one of the FFG uh, design processes that kind of came over and was pushed out in this wave. Uh, and this is separate from the design process that went into the 2.5 rule set. And, uh, and since they have kind of said the days of dial peaking are over, I'm curious if this, like, I, one would assume that AMG knew that this card was coming down the pipe. And is this maybe going to be, because they didn't say 100% of dial peaking cards are going to be um, gone. They just said most of them are going to be gone. I think they said like the vast majority, so almost all of them. But that kind of left them room to say like, all right, maybe one or two cards will remain. And I'm curious what you guys think. Do you think the fact that they previewed this card is an indication that this will be one of the few ways to actually be able to uh, to dial peak? Maybe that's and, and since Talmeric is separatist only and a crew, um, and since separatist doesn't have you know doesn't have a cheap uh, you know, well, I guess 37 points is moderately cheap, um, but like there's no sheathapedes or, or, or nothing, no ultra cheap uh, transports uh, that have a crew slot. Maybe, just maybe, this is uh, within the balance of like, all right, we can allow separatists to be the one faction that can do a dial peak, because since it's an since it's a dial peak that you can actually get rid of. Now, how easy is it to to get this on? <clears throat> well, uh, if you are running against separatists that are running this this upgrade and you happen to have this on your on your ship first off you're going to know when they're going to be able to peak because you'll know that if you have if if the talmeric ship is range zero to two then they're going to be able to peak which is moderately close or if an enemy remote is at range zero to two you they're going to be able to uh, to peak and the separatists have a lot of remotes right not only the the mando the mando commandos uh, but also, you've got like um, Darth Maul has the, the 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 droid that drops his Sith probe droid, and then you've got Buzz droids also for the Discord missiles. And those, so you, those, so the Separatists have like 
what three different ways to drop remotes now. So those are all uh, potentially, if this card stays legal and un, unchanged, then uh, the Separatists will have a lot of ways to peak by using this. This is, But that will also be kind of a, a big thing for Separatists to say, well, we really need... Uh, you know, uh, 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 an HMP gunship or or a Sith infiltrator, and maybe the Sith infiltrator will be the perfect place to run this because it can also drop remotes and also have a crew, right? So, so that seems to make sense here. Um, but then you're also you're taking an expensive ship to be able to do all this stuff, and and then you're taking that expensive ship, and maybe you're using its action, you know, on one of your your, your like your maybe your biggest shooter. You're spending this action just to put out this condition that doesn't help you this round at all. It'll only potentially help you next round and only potentially help you with your move because you're still not going to know who's going first or going second, right? Because, you know, if there's a, if you're playing road, which presumably you will since that's when those rules are going to go live, <clears throat> supposedly the same day that this wave comes out. So this is an interesting one. It's, I think the more you unpack this card, you're like, well, maybe it could. Maybe it could stay legal. I don't know. I don't know for sure. Um, I, I do think that it will stay legal, though. Uh, I think this will, card will stay as is, um, primarily because I think if it was going to be changed, then perhaps uh, AMG might not have done a preview of it yesterday. Um, then again, in between me recording this video and it going live, there's always the chance that maybe they will have changed it, or, or maybe this isn't even the original version of the card. Maybe they had tweaked it a little bit. Maybe the original version lets you peek at everybody's ships and they said, no, 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 we need to scale this back if we're going to have it. Again, that's the sort of thing we probably won't know, um, but it's an interesting thing to consider. Um, and the other thing that's interesting about this is you can do an action just to get rid of it. So if you don't want your opponent peeking at your dials, you can be like, no, 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 boom, my action, kicking this guy off, right? Um, now, there's consequences to that. First off, you're spending your action to do it. Second off, uh, you're going to gain two Tokens, you're going to gain a deplete and a stress, which are uh, not not super great. So, <clears throat> so that like still gives you some predictability, right? It still means, hey, you're probably doing a blue maneuver next turn if you do this. So that still gives you some uh, some predictability. But then again, even if you do get rid of it, your opponent can still try and line up that shot to give you that condition again. He comes back, no, no, I have more wine. Basically... I think he's getting you drunk, and he's probably spiking your drink. I'll have to go back and watch which episode of The Clone Wars was Tal Merrick in. I don't know. I definitely don't remember that. I guess we'll have to go back and watch. It's really interesting. You think about like the deep dives that all the developers have had to do to come up with the, uh, the content to go into these things and make them thematic and get that artwork commissioned and all the work that goes into these expansions. It's very, very cool stuff. Can't wait to see more. All right, guys, uh, we'll be bringing to you more news as we get it. Stay tuned. Uh, 2022 It's going to be a very good year for gaming. I will talk to you guys later. Big thanks to all my viewers. Big thanks to my patrons. You guys are absolutely amazing and help make all of this possible. So thank you for sticking with the channel. Thank you for showing support and love. I will talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much. And always remember, when firing laser blasts on rapid fire mode, allow cooling time such that they don't overheat in your hands.